Hi, I am Ata. In this video, I'll be talking about some best practices when developing ASP.NET MVC applications. First, always favor strongly typed view models over view back or view data. View back is dynamic, and view data is a dictionary. You can easily get into type issues or make a typo in the variable name. Take advantage of strongly typed C# -sharp classes. Also, view models are only for passing data to views. Just put properties and trivial operations if you need them, like getting the time difference between two date time objects. That's why never put logic or database interactions into view models. Stay away from the new keyword as much as possible. You can use them for dummy classes and POJOs, that is, plain old CLR object which consists of properties without methods, but don't use them with business logic classes. Every new keyword introduces a new hard dependency. Hard dependencies create problems when the code base becomes larger. It's very difficult to refactor and very easy to break the business logic. New keyword makes agile development difficult. Please check out my dependency injection video available here at devc.com and see the solution for hard dependency problem. Don't control the workflow with if statement. Although if statements are good for validations and ensuring the data we have is what we want, using them like if this value is this, execute this code block, as if this value is that, execute another code block, is just wrong. Use abstractions like polymorphism and interface to let your code execute smoothly instead of if statements, your code will be elegant. Here's an example. We have users in the system but they can be either guests or members. When getting the user, we need to check if it's a guest or a member so we can obtain the related information. But instead of doing it with if statements like this, I would choose another way. If I was doing it, I would create an interface and classes implementing that interface, one for guests and one for members, and then I would use that object with that interface type without any if statements. That's the real object-oriented way of doing it. You should use different projects for different concerns. Especially the business logic should be separately handled. The data layer is very important to separate for isolating data access from the business logic so that in the future we can change data access system anytime we want, like using NoSQL solutions without changing the business logic at all. The problem with changing the business logic is once you make even a little change, you need to make excessive testing to ensure the logic is correct so that, for example, you are not showing any of your customer's information to another customer. You need to loosely couple the projects. And here is an example of how to make a good loosely coupled architecture. Business layer should not reference either presentation layer or data layer. Presentation and data layer should reference the business layer and they should use the interfaces that Business Layer provides to communicate. HTTP context is a static class for accessing session variables, request and response objects, and it's a must in web projects. Actually, you cannot develop a web application without using the HTTP context at all, and it limits our application to only web environments. We don't want that. We want our code to be generic, and we want it to work everywhere. So instead of using HTTP context directly, we create a class and an interface and wrap HTTP context functionality in it. This way we are able to introduce another class with the same interface, which implements let's say a desktop application or mobile application functionality instead of web environment functionality. We have our code running only by introducing one class without making any change. Writing tests is time consuming. And actual testing the project on the web manually is easy. But tests, especially unit tests, are not for testing the project so that you don't test it. They are for testing the project always, continuously, so that after every little change, all the project can be tested before getting deployed into the server every time. And let me tell you this. Once you get the feeling of all tests passed message, you will want to write tests always. Eric Gamma, one of the authors of the world-famous book Design Patterns, says that program to an interface and an implementation, that's a class by the way, 
and favor object composition over class inheritance. That is, don't create a class first, create the interface first, and create its implementation later. Always provide interface types in method parameters and in properties instead of class types. Also, if you are able to do it by mixing many little interfaces, prefer it instead of inheriting from some base class. Always, always log everything. There are very nice logging libraries out there. Logging is the key to debug the application and recover from unexpected situation. And please don't implement your logging library. I know, it's easy to implement, just write something to a text file, but is it? You need to have logging levels feature, like if a log is a critical log or just an information log. What if your application gets bigger and you have to start buffering logs before writing it? What if you need another logging server and need to distribute logs? What if you want to change logging storage system, like instead of writing into a text file, you want to use an access database or a SQLite database? You need to make many, many tests to ensure there are no bugs in your logging library. I mean, who will log the issue if the issue is in the logging library? And how are you going to find out about this if it is not logged? And that's all folks, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the newsletter and get new videos. Your email address is private, we never give them to anyone. Also if you like this video, please share it. Show how much you like learning new things and let your fans learn too. And also do us a favor. Thanks!